Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Burma from the Center for Dead Cancer Center. I'm here in Sao Paulo at the International Breast Cancer Meeting, and it's uh, wonderful to be here. And today I was presenting on advances in hormone receptor positive breast cancer and treatment. I think we have seen significant advances over the past five years, above and beyond antiestrogen treatment alone. Antiestrogen treatment, of course, has been around since 1977 with the use of tamoxifen. However, over the past five years, we've seen some changes to go above and beyond just monotherapy. One of the big changes was, of course, uh, data from exemestin and abromis versus exemestin alone from the Bellora 2 study, showing an improvement in progression-free survival. The hazard ratio was about 0.48. The PFS went from about 3.2 months to about 8 months. Now, this was an improvement which was statistically and clinically significant, However, it comes with increased toxicities, mainly stomatitis and pneumonitis. And the patients have noticed and benefit. However, we still struggle because of the toxicities into how to uh, apply this data into clinical practice. More recently, uh, we have now data from the CDK4-6 inhibitors looking at palbocyclib in addition to fulvestrant versus fulvestrant plus placebo. This data showed an improvement in progression-free survival again, has a ratio of 0.42. The PFS going from about 3.8 months to close to 9 months, and again, clinically meaningful and statistically significant data. In both the Bellora 2 and the Paloma 3 studies, the overall survival have not been shown to be beneficial so far, and we'll see with the Paloma 3 follow-up will show that benefit. The one advantage with the CDK4-6 inhibitors is the toxicity profile. Yes, they, we see neutropenia, we see leukopenia, but generally non-hematological toxicities were not seen. So patients did require dose reductions, and about a third of these patients required dose reductions, but treatment discontinuation rate was quite low, uh, to be less than 3% in the palbocyclib and fulvestrant arm. So moving forward, I think we have some very important questions to say, how do we integrate these therapies when we have no survival benefit? These are expensive and costly therapies, even though they're providing clinically meaningful advantages. I think for us to justify the cost, we would also like to see survival advantages seen. We also have unanswered questions to see, can patients drive a benefit after they progress on from mTOR inhibitors to CDK4-6 or vice versa? And of course, that is uh, unexplained so far. Moving forward, there's, uh, of course, great enthusiasm to take a look at PA3 kinase inhibitors, both pan-PA3 kinase inhibitors as well as selective PA3 kinase inhibitors. There's interest in looking at CERC inhibitors, interest in looking at HDAC inhibitors. So this area is, I think, going to blossom as we look forward, and I think the future for hormone receptor positive breast cancer is going to be quite promising as we integrate these agents early on.